You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hello, Mr. Morgan. Ferdy. Nice to see you, sir. Where's Daggett? Uh, Mr. Daggett? Mm -hmm. uh, the table in the corner. Uh, he got here a few minutes ago. Good. I'd like to see a dinner menu. Uh, I don't have much of an appetite. A drink, then. The usual. Yeah, make it the good stuff. Of course. Harold, one tequila with lime, table three. Coming right up. He's here, boss. Well, well. How you doing, Dane? You wanted to see me? Yeah, sure. You know Ben and Jimmy. Dane. Hiya. Boys. And Iris and Sherry. Hi. Hello. Pull up a chair. No, thanks. Go ahead. Take a load off. I thought you wanted to talk. I do, I do. Mr. Daggett wants you should sit down. I'll stand. Now listen. That's all right, Ben. If he doesn't feel sociable... I don't have all night. Well, we can't talk here. How's your drink, sweetheart? What? Oh, fine, Bernie. Order another one. Make it champagne all around. Ooh, champagne. Are we celebrating? That's right. A regular celebration. What's the occasion? The six-month anniversary of a wonderful partnership. Come on, Dane. We'll go to my office. You too, Jimmy. Ben. Stay here and keep the ladies company, like I told you. Okay, boss. After you. Age before beauty. That's a good one. Come on in, Dane. What's a bodyguard for? We don't have any secrets in here, do we, Jimmy? Not on your life. Sit down. Have a cigar. I'll take a napkin. What for? My shoe. <laughs> you and your shoes. Always got a brand new pair. What's the matter? You see a piece of lint on them? Jimmy, give him your handkerchief. Huh? Do it. Okay, boss. There. There. That's better. So, what's on your mind, Bernie? Oh, I thought we should have a little sit down. Something wrong? What? No, no. Business is jumping. A real healthy cash flow. Most of it from my joints. Yeah, well, see, that's just it. I'm feeling generous, so I thought I'd make you an offer. Forget it. Wait a while. I'm talking cash. I buy you out. You walk away with enough dough to live the high life. I already live the high life. Yeah, yeah, sure you do. But think about it. You could set up a new business, anything you want. I have a business. Now listen, Dane. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Thanks for the warning. You want my answer? It's a big fat no. Don't waste my time, Bernie. Uh, I'm out of here. Not on your life. That's a laugh. A two-bit mug with a heater in his pocket. Sit down, Dane. Tell him to keep his hands where I can see him or I'll ventilate that cheap suit, but fast. Cheap? It's a Versace. We're not through here. Read my lips. N-O. Dane, Dane, Dane. I thought we had a good thing going. See this 38, Jimmy? Out of my way. Put the piece away, Dane. You're hurting my feelings. You heard the boss. Stay out of your pocket. You too, Bernie. Hands on that desk. Anything you say, Dane. I'm backing out the other door. I see this mug stick his head in the alley. I'll blow it off. Clear? You're getting yourself in an uproar. You need more than a clown in a cheap suit to put the squeeze on me. Maybe so. Now, Ben! He should have looked behind him. Good shooting, Ben. Just like you told me, Mr. Daggett. Now, get this punk out of my office. What do you want we should do with him? Dump him with the rest of the garbage. Jimmy, clean up the blood. He's leaking all over my Persian rug. Right, boss. You got it, Mr. Daggett. Meet Bernie Daggett, a successful West Side businessman. 
He's just concluded a merger with a partner who has certain investments and a preference for two-tone footwear. Make that had, because the owner of those shoes is now officially out of business. Said business will continue, of course, under different ownership. But what of the gray and black wingtips? They're brand new, with a shine so bright you could use them for mirrors. It would be a shame to let them go to waste. But never fear, a certain Nathan Edward Bledsoe of the Bowery Bledsoes is about to recycle them. At the moment, a few long blocks from here, Nathan just happens to be looking for a new pair of treads, because the ones he's wearing are falling apart. He doesn't know it yet, but his search for a warm place to sleep and a bottle of forgetfulness is about to end. Dane shoes will carry him out of his misery and straight into the twilight zone. And now, The Twilight Zone, and our story, Dead Man's Shoes, starring Bill Smitrovich, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Mmm. Oh. Uh, give me a swig, will you, oh. Nate? Sorry, Chips. All gone. Well, let's go get another one. Oh, uh, you go. I'm gonna turn in for the night. But it's early. Besides, I don't... I don't got no more money. Go pay and handle some. Move your head. What for? So as I can toss this bottle in the trash. Two to one says you can't make it. You gotta have money to gamble, remember? Oh. <laughs> you missed. Uh, I guess we better clean it up. <laughs> clean it up. That's a good one. <laughs> now nah, you've done it. Somebody called the cops. Wait. That ain't a cop car. Okay, Jimmy. The coast is clear. Dump them. Where? Under the fire escape by the trash. What you got in the bag? Quiet, quiet. Keep your head down. Okay, Ben. I'm done it. Let's go, let's go. Mr. Daggett said to come right back. So long, Dane. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Will you look at that? They drove all the way down here just to dump their garbage. That ain't garbage, you moron. Then what? What do you think? You mean? Go, go check it out. Maybe maybe he's got a ring on his finger or something. Oh, no. I ain't messing with no... Dead body. You chicken? Yeah, I'm chicken. What's that sticking out? I don't see nothing. Wait here. What is it? Can you beat that? Just what I needed. What? Guy's got a pair of shoes on. Brand new. I wouldn't touch him if I was you. My size, too. Careful, Nate. You're fooling with evidence. Look at that. Perfect. Wonder if there's anything in the pockets. Nate, we gotta get out of here, I tell you, before they hang it on us. No wallet. Oh, nothing, except for this key. Hmm. Number 621, Mayfair Apartments. Hey, I know where that is. Pretty swanky. Hey, where you going? To check out my new digs. <laughs> Fair Apartments. <laughs> Dorman, would you get me a cab? Certainly, ma'am. Taxi! Next in line over here. 
Where's she going? West 84th. Ma'am, here you go. Thank you. Now this is for your trouble. Thank you, ma'am. Watch your fingers. Hey, fella, where you going? This building is for residents only. Yeah, sure, pal. So sue me. Apartment number 621. Nice place. Dane, I'm so glad you're here. I was just painting my toenails. Where were you? Who are you? That's rich. Who am I, she says. What do you want? Not you, that's for sure. Better get out of here, Buster. I'm not kidding. Now where's the liquor? Right over there. That's Dane's tequila. Oh. If he comes back and finds out you touched his stuff, he'll kill you. Sure he will. Do you hear what I said? He'll... he'll kill you. For real. Uh, thanks for telling me, Wilma. I told you my name. You know what I'm gonna do now? I'm going in the bedroom to get some clean clothes and after I take a nice hot shower. And you know what you're gonna do? What? You're gonna fix me another drink. I am. And use the good stuff. The gold reserve. <gasps> but that's... That's what? N nothing Oh, and Wilma? Yes? Don't even think about leaving. You'd never make it downstairs. Uh. Hmm, shirt, socks. And a suit. Think I'll try the pinstripe. me, Wilma. Wilma? No, I can't talk any louder. Listen, is Dane there? Well, where is he? What do you mean you don't know? All right, do me a favor. Call me as soon as you do. Thanks, Bernie. Where is he? Who? Dane! Dane? Uh, I don't know who that is. Oh, yes you do. Uh, I don't. Honest. Then what are you doing here? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. You walked in here with his shoes on. Nobody else wears shoes like Dane's. I don't remember. Well, maybe this will refresh your memory. Hey! What are you pointing a gun at me for? I don't know what you're talking about, lady. I, I, I found the shoes. At least I think I did. You mean you oh. stole them? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I stole them, okay? Where? Please, miss. I don't know anything about I don't know anything about nothing. What do you know? N nothing. You gotta believe me. I, I ought to shoot you right now. Busting in here like you own the place. Please. I don't want any trouble. All right, but you get dressed and get out of here. Move. Okay, okay. I'm going. I'm going. Hurry up! I just gotta put my shoes on. Those aren't your shoes. Yeah? Is that right? And what about the gun? I suppose that's not mine either. What? Keep away from me! Give me that thing. Ow! You shouldn't play with guns, Wilma. You might get hurt. Hand me the towel. What? The bath towel. I see some dust on my shoe. <laughs> Just get out, please. I won't say anything. Where's the other one? I don't know what you mean. The automatic. What do you think I mean? 
in the closet, the shoulder holster. Full clip. Good. What are you standing there for? I thought I told you to make me a drink. Look, mister, I don't know what you want here. A drink, I said. Okay, okay. What kind? What do I have to do, break your arm? The only thing I ever drink. Tequila with lime. Dane's due back any second. I'm warning you, for your own sake, if you know what's good for you... I know what's good for me. Please, don't touch me. Please, don't! Oh. Who am I, baby? Oh, it's not possible. No? Let's try that again. Dane? But you're not him. You're not! Be quiet. What have you done with him? What happened? What? Oh. Wait. Wait, you gotta tell me. Please! Tell you what? I have to know! Later. Where are you going? I got a little unfinished business to take care of. Where's Bernie? Bernie? Bernie Daggett. At the club. That's what I thought. You wait here. I'll be back after it's over. And don't answer the door. For your own good. Sir? Yeah? Did you get the message from Mr... Oh, I'm sorry. What's the matter? Their problem? Uh, nothing, sir. I thought you were someone else. Oh, is that so? Like who? Another one of our residents. Well, let me guess. The guy in 621? That's right. You must know Mr. Morgan. Yeah, you might say that. Uh, just visiting. What's it to you? Oh, well, nothing at all. It's just... Just what? Uh, that suit and those shoes. Mr. Morgan has a pair exactly like them. No kidding. Must be quite popular these days. Very smart. I like them. You got a handkerchief? Why, yes, I'm sure I do. Uh, here you are. Clean one, is it? Oh, yes, sir. Good. Got a scuff on the toe. You do? It doesn't show from here? Shoe shine stands closed, huh? Uh, yes, sir. At this time of night. Yeah, here you go. Here's a tip. Oh, that's not necessary, really. It's the concierge's job, too. Listen, get a shoe shine boy who works around the clock. Some people care about how they look. Right, uh, I'll do that. Hey there, Mr. Morgan. Get a cab for you? No, thanks, Tommy. Oh, begging your pardon, you're not Mr. Morgan. Were you sure about that? Get you a cab if you like, sir. That's okay, Tommy. I feel like walking. Clean shirt, new shoes, and I know just where I'm going to. Sure looks like you do. Yep. Clothes make the man. <laughs> That's what they say. Hello, Mrs. Tomlin. Oh, watch your step. Why, thank you, Thomas. Yes, sir. May I help you? I'd like a table. Do you have a reservation? How about that one over there? In the corner. Next to Daggett. I'm afraid that table is reserved. It is, huh? If you would care to wait at the bar, perhaps something will open up. Well, here you go, Ferdy. This should take care of it. That table open now? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, I should have known a man like you would have a reservation. Yeah, it must have slipped your mind, huh? Right this way. Let me pull the chair out for you. And what may I bring you, sir? The usual. The usual? Tequila. Really? Any particular brand? The good bottle, under the bar, with a slice of lime. Certainly, sir. Right away. Ferdy. 
Yes, Mr. Daggett. Bring us another bottle of champagne. Of course. Who's that, anyway? You mean the gentleman with the shoes? I'm afraid I don't know, Mr. Daggett. Never saw him in here before. Nor have I. I'll get you your champagne. Friend of yours? No friend of mine. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah, boss? That fella over there. You seen him? Negative. What about you, Benny boy? Never set eyes on him. Well, he seems to know us. What's he smiling for? He ain't looking at me, honest. <sighs> of all the nerve. Just some lush. Forget it. Yeah, but a familiar lush. Something about him. Maybe he's looking at me. <gasps> Iris? It could be. Or ain't I worth staring at anymore? Oh, nobody said that. Said what? Oh, nothing. I just said I was leaving you. Yeah, sure. Jimmy, why don't you go over there and... See? You never listen to me. I'm all ears. I said I was leaving you, Bernie. Sure you are. I mean it. We're Splitsville. <laughs> There's only one way people leave me, honey. Feet first. Drink up, everybody. Let's finish this bottle. Sorry to tell you, boss, but that guy's still looking at us. Like he's got a secret or something. Oh, he's driving me crazy. All right, that's it. Can't even have a drink in peace. Ben. Yeah? Invite him over. What if he don't want to come? Then get rid of him. No problem. Hey. You talking to me? Mr. Daggett wants you. Oh, isn't that nice? Makes me feel all warm inside. He wants you should join him. Well, what do you know? An invitation from the great Bernie Daggett at his own personal table. Are you sure? He loves you should join him. Oh, I don't know what to say. Don't say nothing. Just do it. Well, if you put it that way, I accept. Here he is, boss. Well, well. Allow me to introduce myself. Hello, Bernie. You know me? Well, everyone does. By reputation. Oh, I get it. Sit down. Thanks. Get the man a chair. You, uh, celebrating something? You might say so. Big business deal? Who told you that? Friend of mine. That right. What are you drinking? Tequila with lime. What did you say? Something wrong with that? No, no. It's just kind of funny. Is it? A coincidence is all. I had a friend drank the same stuff. Well, no kidding. What happened to him? What do you mean? Well, you said had. Say, what's your name? Kilroy. Look, buddy, when Mr. Daggett asked you a question... Easy, Jimmy. I'm sure he didn't mean no disrespect. What line are you in? Restaurants. Just like Dane. Isn't that something? But tonight... I'm a messenger boy, and I've got a message for you, Mr. Daggett. Well, go ahead. Let's have it. Oh, I'm sorry. A no can do. What do you mean? I have instructions to deliver the message personally, in private. It's uh, kind of a touchy matter. You understand? And who's this message from? Afraid I can't say. Here you are, sir. Another bottle of champagne on ice and one shot of tequila with a slice of lime. On me. Here you go, Polly. Yeah. Thanks. Think nothing of it. Anything else here? I'll let you know. Yes, sir. Nice drink. Glad you like it. Nice place. Real nice. You own it? This guy. What did he look like? Which guy? The one that gave you the message. Well, sometimes, Mr. Daggett, it's my business to forget things. Not remember them. Okay, messenger boy. Let's go. Ben, wait here with the girls. Keep an eye on things. You know what I mean. Don't worry, boss. I got you covered. It has to be private. It will be. My office? So it's me. Hey, I didn't say where it was yet. Didn't you? Down the hall. The door at the end. Right.
Nice place you got here. Soundproof, too, so we can talk in private. Good idea. Come on in. Make yourself comfortable. Oh, age before beauty. That's a good one. Jimmy? Put your arms out. What for? Just till we get acquainted. Go on, Jimmy. Frisk him. Well, well. What do we got here? Well, it looks like a 38 to me. What's the matter? The monkey can't see? You got nerve bringing a piece in here? That's okay. I know how it is. A man needs protection nowadays. Yeah. Yeah, you don't know what kind of trash you'll run into. Hold it for him, Jimmy. Hey, careful with that. I'm always careful. Just till we're finished. Tell your monkey I want it back with all the bullets. Hear that, Jimmy? Absolutely. Have a seat. Cigar? No, I don't smoke. Good idea. Could be dangerous to your health. So could a lot of things. Yeah, looks like you got a good thing going here. I get by. Win some, lose some. I bet you don't lose very often. I try to keep my hand in the game. And what game is that? Oh, you know. Little of this, little of that. I got a string of restaurants now. That right. Strictly legit. Must be doing pretty good. Nice digs, mirror on the wall, big desk. They call it Danish modern. Hey, real oil paintings. Cost me plenty, let me tell you. See that picture there? Thomas Kincaid original. No kidding. Of course, I got a special discount. <laughs> yeah, you paid too much. What? I have three, just like it. Picked them up at a fire sale. Guy turns them out like a factory. Doesn't even sign his name. Got a room full of brunettes to do it for him. Jimmy, make a note. Yeah, boss. See if there's a money-back guarantee on this crap. Now then, what were we saying? The message? Oh, yeah. Your monkey deaf, too? Say hot shot. Don't worry about it. When does he go back in his cage? I got no secrets from my boys. Yeah, you sure? Sure, I'm sure. And one thing first. What's that? Give me a handkerchief. You got one in your breast pocket. Yeah, I know, but I don't want to get it dirty. Hear that, Jimmy? Yeah, yeah. Here you go, hot shot. There's a piece of dirt on my shoe. Maybe you should watch where you step. Right. All kinds of dirt around here. Where'd you get those shoes? I borrowed them. From who? A friend of mine. What's your friend's name? I think you've met. What's your real name, mister? My name? That's from my friends. Are we friends yet? I don't know. Are we? Yeah, I'd buy you a drink, invite you to my office, and all because you got a message to deliver. If that ain't friendly, I don't know what is. Bernie, Bernie, Bernie. Mr. Daggett to you. How'd you get it clean so fast? What? The rug on the floor? What about it? Well, blood's hard to get out, isn't it? Say, what are you inferring? You have to send it to the cleaners, unless you got your own cleaners. Nickel and dime mugs who wipe up people's messes for them. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you? But I know one thing. You got a bad attitude. The kind that can get you in trouble. Absolutely. You think so? Then here's what I'm going to do, Bernie. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I'm talking about another guy who had a nice thing going for him. Yeah, plenty of dough, plenty of action, restaurant uptown, only he wasn't happy. And you know why? Let me guess. People were sticking their nose in his business. Close, but no cigar. He had a partner. That meant he couldn't be number one, see? And being number one was very important to him. So he offered to buy the partner out, and when the partner refused to sell, this guy, he brought him in his office, and he killed him. Blew him away. Just like that. Or rather, he had his monkeys do it so he wouldn't get his hands dirty. It happened right here, and nobody was the wiser. Oh, it was one slick job. You're out of your mind. Only not slick enough. You didn't get it all up. Take a look. There's still some little bits of blood on the rug around the edge, see? Jeez, I hope you didn't wash it in hot water, Bernie. That makes the stain set, so it'll never come out. There'll always be traces. You know, the cops come in, put the stuff on it, the luminol, then they shine a purple light, and whatever was there, bing, there it is. Who, who are you? I told you, a messenger. And here's the message. 
Look out, boss. He's got another piece. I thought you said he was clean. He didn't check behind my back. Anybody but a monkey knows to do that. Now take the gun out of your pocket and set it on the desk. Real slow. Better do what the man says, Jimmy. Okay. Okay. Now take the other one. The 38 you took off me and put it down on the floor. And kick it over to me. Nice and easy. Can't we talk this out? And don't go for your own gun, Bernie. Keep your hands where I can see them. That looks like you got the drop on me. You heard the man, Jimmy. Nice and easy. I'm doing it, see? But you're not doing it right, you big monkey. You put it down so the barrel's pointing at me. You're gonna go for it, aren't you, Jimmy? You just can't help yourself. So I better do something before you make a play. Ugh. Are you nuts? You shot Jimmy in cold blood. That's right. And now it's your turn. You won't get away with this. Not unless I take care of Ben, too. What are you talking about? There's nobody else here. He's outside in the alley. Come on, drawing a bead on the door right now. As soon as he opens it, I'm history. Unless I shoot first. What are you doing shooting holes in my door? Didn't think it would work for a second time, did you, Bernie? Ben waiting in the alley before I can back out, huh? You're crazy. Open it. Take a look. Bet I drilled him right through the stomach. At least I hope so. Takes longer to die that way. There's nobody out there, I tell you. Oh, and by the way, where's the other 38, Bernie? The one you took off me the first time. In the desk? Huh? I'd like to have it back. Dang. You are him. But it ain't possible. Say goodbye, partner. Vaya con Dios. Now, Ben! Oh. You remember the door to the alley, smart guy. Only I never do the same thing twice. You didn't think about the mirror. A two-way mirror to the next room. Too bad, Bernie. That means seven years bad luck. Got him. Nice and clean. Good shooting, Ben. You cut that pretty close. I wanted to take him out with one shot, the way you got Jimmy. Bernie, listen to me. Listen good. You want I should finish him? Wait. I'll come back, Bernie. And I'll keep coming back. Again and again. And, and sooner or later, I'll kill you. So help me. I'll, I'll kill you. <coughs> Get him out of my face. Right. Drop this scumbag in the garbage any place you want. Just don't let me see those shoes again. Not as long as I live. With pleasure. Get some of the boys over here. We should bury Jimmy nice and proper. You got it. And remind me to send some money to his old lady. Who was this piece of junk, anyway? I'll tell you something, Benny. I don't know. I really and truly don't know. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Spare change, bus fare, something to eat. Hold on. What in the... Nice pair of shoes. Huh? <sighs> Nate? That you? Oh, no, no. Poor Nathan. I'm sorry. You forgive me, don't you, Nate? But I guess you won't have any use for him now. Rest in peace, buddy. Yeah, what do you know? Perfect fit. 
Spare change, sir? Ma'am? Anything at all? Hot meal? That's all I need. <laughs> yeah, and a hot bath and a change of clothes. That's all. Because I got places to go and things to do. <laughs> There's an old saying that goes, clothes make the man. And another one that says, if the shoe fits, wear it. Keep both phrases in mind should you ever find yourself on a lonely street at night. Because nothing comes without a price. And if you happen upon a pair of expensive black and gray loafers size 9, be very careful. Because they just might have a mind of their own. Try them on and chances are you'll find yourself on a long distance trek into the twilight zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. Dead Man's Shoes, starring Bill Smitrovich with Stacy Keach as your. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Captain. What? Look in the viewer. Switch lenses. Yes, sir. It was at 255-417. I don't see anything. Maybe not now, but something glittered down there. We went over a lake, you know. I know. It wasn't that. Well... We'll take a closer look, but it's probably the lake. I'm wasting our time again. What are we turning for? I saw something. What? Something metallic, Carter. Yeah? He thinks so. We're almost there. Then we'll know. Trees, rivers, a regular incubation lab on this planet. I know what you're thinking. Don't. It's got to happen sometime. Yeah? Who says? Only the astrophysicists, the biologists, and... Mason, you've got aliens on the brain. You're contact happy. <laughs> Maybe we've been out too long. Do you really think man is the only intelligent... All right, all, all right. So we're going to meet another race. Great. It would be great. It's going to happen sooner or later. Why not to us? Man, that would be something. Another... There it is. In the viewer. Looks like it might be a ship. Don't count on it. Well, let me see that. We're passing over. Aren't we going to... Will you please... We should at least stop and take some specimens. Mason's right, Captain. But it's your call. In your flight chairs, we'll set down. Captain Ross, Lieutenant Mason, Lieutenant Carter, aboard Spaceship X-89, cruising above the 13th planet of Star System 51. In a little while, supposedly, the ship will be landed and specimens taken. Vegetable, mineral, and, if any, animal. These will be brought back to overpopulated Earth, where technicians will evaluate them. 
And if everything is satisfactory, stamp their findings with the word inhabitable and open yet another planet for colonization. These are the things that are supposed to happen. In actuality, they will not happen at all, but will instead be superseded by events far more unusual because the 13th planet of star system 51 just happens to be located in the twilight zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Death Ship. Starring John Schneider with Stacy Keach as your narrator. You heard the man. Strap in. We're going down. What's the matter with the captain? Beats me. I can hardly talk to him anymore. He has been acting pretty strangely. You said it. As if he's fighting something. Yeah, us. You really think it's a ship? If it is, I don't see how it could be from Earth. We've got this run all to ourselves. They might have gotten off course. Yeah, not this far. Setting down. Right, Captain. Retros. Bunch of metal twisted and easy. Don't open the hatch till we check the atmosphere. I'll take a reading. Put your suits on. We won't need helmets. Air's good. Let's go, Mike. Can't get out there fast enough, can you? What does that mean? It means I don't like impulsive behavior. Impulsive? Have I made any mistakes? You're on the verge. Well, then you let me know when I cross the line, won't you? Oh, I will. Don't you worry. We stay together. Nobody takes any risks. That's an order. I understand, Captain. Carter? Yeah? All right, then. Let's go. One of our ships. Don't jump to conclusions. Well, doesn't it? From what I can see of the markings, it does. Construction could be standard everywhere. Sounds like you're arguing both sides. You don't mean it could be from another species, do you? I don't mean anything yet. It is one of ours. How could it get so far off course? Go aboard, Captain? I don't like it. We have to find out who they are, don't we? How will we know if we don't... All right, but stay together. Let's put our gloves on. Sure thing. Man. Pretty familiar, isn't it? Even all bent up like this. It's from Earth, no doubt about it. We don't know that. But, Captain, look at the shape, the, the styling. We don't know it, Carter. Ugh, that's just jammed. Maybe the cabin's still pressurized. Uh, not likely. Door frame's probably twisted. We'll try it together. If it doesn't open, forget about it. Forget about it? There isn't time. We have a schedule to keep. It's moving. <laughs> it's moving. Uh, let's go. This must be the main cabin. <sighs> Looks like our ship. Use your flashlights. Over here. What? It's a body. You turn him over. Don't. Give me a hand. <clears throat> Dear God. Wait a minute. Do you see what I think I see? 
There's another one against the wall. Help me lift him. Don't, I said. What is going on here? That one has a face like... Nothing's going on. And the third one, he... Carter, try the auxiliary lights. But Captain, Nick, is it just me or are we standing here looking at three bodies with three faces that look exactly like our faces? Auxiliary lights. I don't understand. It's not what it seems. Not what it's... Just hang on, here come the lights. All right then, first things first. Uh, here's an ID wallet in, uh, in this one's breast pocket. And here's his government card, picture and all. It says, Lieutenant Robert Mason. See it? That's my name, isn't it? That's my face, just like the one in my pocket right here. Well, isn't it? Put it back. Everybody see it? The same as mine, identical. Put it back. I don't get it. The same with the second one. What is this? You're letting it get to you. Get to me? This is my picture. Me. Hang on, lay them out and get something to cover them with, both of you. Captain, look at the third one and tell me it's not... I see it. Cover them now. No, I'm not touching them again. Carter. Nobody else touched them. I, I don't know about you fellas, but I need an explanation for this. I need... We're leaving this wreck now. I said now. Everybody out. Our ship is where we left it, just as we left it. Look ahead of you, 50 yards, what do you see? That's our ship over there, the same place we left it a few minutes ago, not this one. And those bodies aren't ours. But they are. No, you saw them. I don't know what I saw, and neither do you. You agree with him, Mason? What? We're going back to our ship and radio the base. They'll tell us what to do. Will they? Shouldn't we... What? Bury our... Dead? They're not ours. Get that through your head. Now let's go. You too, Mason. Right. Move! We're alive, I tell you. Alive. Again. I've been trying it for again. Captain, there's no point if it won't. What is this? It was working before. Maybe it's this planet. What are you talking about? Maybe there's an interfering field. That's of... ridiculous. Try the radionic signal. Captain, it's not going to. It's... Will you do as I say? Yes, sir. Again. Again. If it doesn't work the first time... They didn't hear us. The return signal is automatic. Do I have to tell you that? All right, let's, let's go over this again. There's an answer here somewhere. Those bodies in the other ship aren't ours. That much we're sure of. Well, use your heads. These are our bodies. These, right here. Agreed? Uh, I don't know anymore. Neither do I. Listen. You both remember what they told us in training? About the theory of circumnavigating time. They said it might be possible for us to leave Earth in one year, and when we got back, even though we thought it was the same year, it might be the year before. Or the year after. Remember that? It was only a theory, Captain. It's more than a theory. It's what happened to us. We went through some kind of a time warp, right? 
into the future. And that ship over there is in the future. Is that what you're saying? Only the probable future. And what does that mean? It means that we're not dead. It also means that we're going to be dead. Not if we don't take off. If we don't go up, we can't crash. But our orders, they don't say to kill ourselves. We're alive now, and the only way to be certain we stay alive is not to go up. Then we can't possibly crash. We avoid it, prevent it. I've made up my mind. We stay. It's easy enough for you to decide. Meaning? You have no one waiting for you back on Earth. So I have no reason to go back and I'll be just as happy here as I would be on Earth? Is that it? I think we should vote on it. Oh, you do? You're not the only one, Captain. I'm the only one who gives the orders. Even when our lives are concerned, huh? Especially where your lives are concerned. We stay. For how long? I'm not setting any time limit, Carter. A month? Two months? I'm not setting any limit. We have enough food left for three weeks, Captain. I've no doubt there's edible food outside. You saw the landscape, trees, vegetation. How will we know what's edible and what isn't? We haven't got the equipment to test it. We'll watch the animals. I saw no animals, Captain. Did you? There will be. Well, if there are, there'll be a different form of life. What they eat might be deadly poisonous to us. We'll worry about that when the time comes. Right now, there's only one thing to worry about. Preserving our lives. It may not even be necessary to stay here permanently. We may figure something out. But for now, the decision is to stay. Not our decision, Captain. Have you a better solution, then? Working at minimum capacity, the ship's electrical reserve can hold out for months. It won't be working at minimum capacity. Why? We're going to need heat. Lots of it. But it's only twilight, and already the temperature outside is minus 13 degrees. Would you rather lift off? Take the risk of duplicating that ship over there? How can we duplicate it, Captain? How can there be two crash ships? Two of me dead, two of Mason, two, two of you. We'll go over it again until we find an answer. Because we have to. I think I'll lie down. Me too. It's been quite a day. And it's getting dark out fast. Very, very dark. did you get home? Home? On leave, are you? I... You're looking fit. I expect Mary's mighty pleased to have you back. Well, did, did you see Mary? She don't know? I have to go. Oh, wait up. I'll walk you. I don't understand. How long you been home? I uh, just got here. Oh. You rocket boys sure travel informal these days. Mary know you're coming? I don't think so. Gonna surprise her, huh? Yes. Surprise her. How long you got? I'm not sure. You all right, Mike? Hello, Mike. Mrs. Nolan? Oman Furlow? I... I don't know. Old Mrs. Nolan still makes that long walk to town every day. <laughs> She'll go on forever. Forever. Hey, maybe we can do some hunting while you're home, huh, Mike? Got my shotgun with me. Always carry it now in case I see something. Not that I ever hit anything, but... Hey, where are you going? Oh, I get it. In a hurry, huh? The house. Mary! There's a car. It's parked in front. Mary! Mary, I'm home. In the living room. The kitchen. Mary! Where are you? Mary! Mary! Are you upstairs? Oh, Mary! Why are you, why are you lying there on the bed like that? Is something? I'm, I'm here. Can't you hear me? I'm. What's this? A telegram to Mrs. Michael. Carr. 
Carter, we regret to inform. Carter. Regret to inform. Carter. What is this? I'm talking to you. What are you? What are you? What's the matter? C Captain. What's the matter with you? I... I was home. Where? Home. My home. You were here. You are here. No. No, I swear it. I... I saw Mary. She was... there with a, a telegram. It, it said that I'd been killed. You're alive. Those people I know. Kramer. Mrs. Nolan. I just remembered they're, they're dead. Stop it, Carter. Kramer was killed in a hunting accident. Mrs. Nolan was... It never happened. There's an explanation for this. What explanation? I don't know what, but we'll find it. We'll find it, Carter. We'll go over it again and again until we do. You, me, Mason. Where's Mason? He was in his bunk. Well, he's not there now, is he? I've been here the whole time. The hatch is still locked. Mason! Mason! Where is he? Well, where'd he go? You tell me. There's nothing but his blanket. Oh, my blanket. My blanket. What? What's it doing on the grass? Fishing pole? Can't be. Oh, there you are. I thought I'd never find you. <gasps> Jeannie. I looked and looked. I found him. Can't be. Lunch is ready, Daddy. And mine's hungry. It's all your fault. Jeannie, is it really you? What's the matter? Daddy. Come here. Oh, come here. Oh, Jeannie, Jeannie. What is it, Daddy? Oh, it is you. What's wrong with you? Oh, nothing. I I'm, uh, I know, I'm just glad to see you, that's all. Oh. That wasn't your mother you were just calling just now, was it? You're acting weird. Jeannie, was it? Yes, Daddy. You know that. Where is she? Over by the table. Where? Where? Bob? Oh, you scared me, honey. Bursting out of the bushes like that. I was just setting out the fried chicken. Oh, God, Ruth. Oh, God. Bob, what is it? Sweetheart, what's wrong? Nothing now. Are you sure? Yes, uh, yeah, oh yes. <laughs> All this for lunch? <laughs> yes. My goodness, so emotional over a little potato salad and chicken. Where's Jeannie? Back there, uh, by the pond. Were you asleep? Are you still asleep? This is a dream. I hope I never wake up. I just hope I go on dreaming and... Mason! Bob? Ruth? Bob, who's... Let's go, Mason. Why is he here? Stand behind me. But... Just do it. Get out of here, Ross. I said, let's go. Get away from us. You're coming back with me. Back? Where you belong. On the ship. No, Bob. You're having a hallucination, Lieutenant. No, it's real. It isn't. And you're leaving with me. No! Come on, you think you can take me? Stop it! Take me back. You're coming back. I'm staying here. You can't. I won't let you. No. Yes. Back. 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 I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. Take it easy. <laughs> Ruth. <laughs> There was no Ruth, no genie. You lie. Let go of me. 
Look in your billfold, look. What does the clipping say? Read it. Leave me alone. I'll read it for you. Space pilot's family dies in car crash. The wife and seven-year-old daughter of astronaut Robert Mason died early this morning when the car they were in... It's not true. Now do you still insist you were with them? You alive? They dead? I was with them. I was. And you took me away. It's not true, Mason. You took me away from my wife, my home, I... You were here all the time. You and Carter. Uh, he was gone. No. We just couldn't see him, that's all. What are you talking about? I know what it is now. That's what I'm talking about. Give me that clipping. I was wrong. It, it had nothing to do with circumnavigating time. Nothing at all. Mason, remember what you thought when you saw that ship over there? Alien contact. That's what you thought. And that's exactly what's happened to us. The captain. There are no such things as... Listen to me. Neither of you was where you thought you were. At, at home. That ship over there isn't ours, and those bodies aren't ours. We, we've been tricked. By who? By whoever it is that lives on this planet and doesn't want anyone else to live here. Now who's crazy? Don't you understand? We haven't seen them, but there are aliens here. But aliens who aren't strong enough to chase us away by force or kill us. So what can they do? How can they keep their planet from being colonized? By mind control, that's how. By picking at our brains and finding the death fear. And making use of it by showing us our ship crashed and us dead inside of it. Scaring us so much that we didn't dare take off again. And therefore haven't been able to make our report about this planet. They even know that we can't radio or report to Earth because there's too much interference. You didn't believe there was interference before. I believe it now. Everything that's happened to us since we landed on this planet has been a delusion. No, it happened. I was home. I was It with... was a delusion. Even Mason's disappearance? W well, why not? If they can make us believe we saw a crashed ship, saw our own bodies inside that ship, they can make us believe anything. That ship over there, that pile of twisted metal, it's not real. Is that your theory? You may see it. Even think you touch it, that doesn't prove it exists. What's going to prove it doesn't exist, Captain? What's going to prove that everything you've said is true? I'll tell you what's going to prove it, Lieutenant Mason. Us. Going up. Taking off. And going all the way back to Earth. Proving that there's nothing holding us back but fear and delusions. Now take your positions and let me at the controls. Wait a minute. In your seat, shoulder straps. What if you're wrong? I'm right. You thought you were right before. You were ready to keep us here indefinitely, you were so sure. Then, in a few minutes, we really will be dead. Flight seats, now. No. What do you think you're... I'm with Mason on this. Get your hands off those switches. That's an order. Are you so arrogant that you'll take a chance on killing us just to prove your point? I'm still the captain of this ship, and you'll do what I say. You're not the captain of our lives. Put your sidearm away. You're not taking us up. You want to stay here then? Starve? Freeze? Never see Earth again? Put it away, Mike. That's no answer. Then what is... I suppose he's right. You agree with him now? He's got a point. It's a big one. We can't just stay here. We do that and we know what'll happen. That's a given. It's a matter of food and the power supply and the temperature at night. We don't have a choice. I guess we don't. There's only one place left to go, and that's up. God have mercy on our souls. Pressure. Rising. Drive reactor. Check. Coordinates. Check. Gyro stabilizer. Active. Vertical thrust. Energized. Then prepare for liftoff. Check. Two hundred. 
Three hundred. Five hundred. Here we go. One thousand. Twelve fifty. Fifteen hundred, Captain. <laughs> Look at that. Twenty-two fifty. Twenty-seven fifty. Three thousand. Four. Five. Six thousand. We're out. Release shoulder straps. We did it, boys. Check the viewer. Checking. Well, see anything down there now? You were right. If I ever see anything glitter in that viewer again, I'll keep my mouth shut. I was right. Captain? What are you? What are you doing now? Taking her down. We're landing. What? But say that again. Now that we know what it is, there's no reason we shouldn't go back, is there? No reason? Are you out of your mind? Captain, for God's sake! Think. The other ship, the bodies that looked like ours, all an illusion. That's what we were afraid of, but none of it was real. Maybe. That's still a hypothetical. Yeah, we have to get out of here while we have the chance. Now stand aside. Get your hands off the controls. We have orders, Carter. Pick up specimens for analysis. We are going to pick them up. No, we're not. You're not going to... Now you've done it. Now you've done it! Let me at the main controls. You were right the first time. That was us down there. We're gonna crash. Now! No! We're going to die. We're not going to die! I'm not going to let us die. Auxiliary thrusters. It's no use. The stabilizer. The stabilizer. Heck. I don't understand. Shut up. You're a coward, Carter. You don't even have the guts to fight for your own life. We're still going to land? You bet we're going to land. And when we do, you're going to see that the other ship is gone. Vanished. Because it was never there in the first place. Retros. Slow airspeed. I've got it. Now get in your places. We're not gonna crash. He's been right all along, hasn't he? I don't know. Prepare for touchdown. Take a look out the port. It's too dark to see anything. Use the spotlight. Looking. Well? Landscape looks the same. Clear. Clear, but how do we know we're facing in the right direction? Give me that. Go on, take a good look. Hills, trees, and... What is it? Let me see. No, no! Gone, Captain? Vanished? Is that what you said? All right. It's still there. I'll say it is. The same wreck. That doesn't mean... I'll tell you what it means. It means you're wrong. Dead wrong. Hang on. There's an explanation for this. And that would be... I don't know yet, but... You'll never know. And neither will we. Now we'll have to go up again, and this time we'll really crash and be killed and end up looking just like those four... No. What did you say? We're not going to crash. <laughs> How do you know? We're not going to crash because we already have crashed. Explain that. Stop fighting it, Captain. You're all out of explanations. What are you... There's only one explanation left, and you know what it is. Mason? 
I know nothing of the kind. Yes, you do. Carter was home, and that telegram was really there. I was with my wife and daughter, because I'm like them now. No. Accept it, Captain. Accept what? Stop trying to prove that we're alive. We are alive. I don't know what it is that's happening here, but there's an answer somewhere. Somewhere. I've given you the answer. I don't accept it. We're going over this again. We're going to find the real answer. Maybe you should listen to him. Can't you see that's what we've been doing? Going over it again and again? Then we'll just have to keep going on until... What happened to the lights? Mason, I... Let us die, Captain. I, I can barely see you. It, it, it's like I can see through you. Let go of us. Let us die. No. No! We're alive. Alive. We're going over it one more time from the beginning, you hear me? One more time. Captain. What? Look in the viewer. Switch lenses. Yes, sir. It was at 255-417. I don't see anything. Maybe not now, but something glittered down there. We went over a lake, you know. I know. It wasn't that. Well... We'll take a closer look, but it's probably the lake. I'm wasting our time again. What are we turning for? I saw something. What? Something metallic, Carter. Yeah? He thinks so. We're almost there, then we'll know. Trees, rivers, a regular incubation lab on this planet. I know what you're thinking. Don't. It's gotta happen sometime. Yeah? Who says? Only the astrophysicist, the biologist, and... Mason, you've got aliens on the brain. You're contact happy. <laughs> Maybe we've been out too long. Do you really think man is the only intelligent... All right, all, all right. So we're going to meet another race. Great. It would be great. It's going to happen sooner or later. Why not to us? Man, that would be something. Another... There it is. In the viewer. Looks like it might be a ship. Don't count on it. Well, let me see that. We're passing over. Aren't we going to... Will you please... We should at least stop and take some specimens. Mason's right, Captain. But it's your call. In your flight chairs, we'll set down. Captain Ross, Lieutenant Mason, Lieutenant Carter, aboard Spaceship X-89, cruising above the 13th planet of Star System 51. In a little while, supposedly, the ship will be landed. Picture of a man who will not see anything he does not choose to see, including his own death. A man of such indomitable will that even the two men under his command are not allowed by him to see the truth. Which truth is that they are no longer among the living, that the movements they are now about to make, the words they are now about to speak, They've all been made and spoken countless times before, and will be made and spoken countless times again, perhaps even unto eternity. Pictured of a latter-day flying Dutchman sailing into the Twilight Zone.
Thank you. 